Okay, so we had um, just talked about gravitational attraction and centripetal force. Uh, now we have to talk about resultant forces. Resultant forces are what you get when you add together these, um, or subtract as the case may be, the vectors involved of the forces we're talking about. And this picture um, has a lot of weird stuff going on, but let's look at it for a second. So remember, gravitational force is um, all over the surface of the Earth. It's directed towards the center of the moon, um, and that's the ones you see here in black. And um, when you're at the zenith, they're at their largest. When you're at the nadir, they're at their smallest. Then we have the centripetal force, which is the same everywhere, right? See all the seas? They're all the same size. Doesn't matter where you are. Not directed towards the surface of the moon, just um, perpendicular to the surface of the Earth. If you were to add these together, you would get what we call the resultant forces, and that's directed in blue. And the resultant force is basically when you add up vectors, um, the math is going to be outside the scope of this class, but basically you end up with these um, blue arrows that point in all sorts of weird directions, and this is what you get when you add um, gravity and centripetal force. Um, seem to be going towards the moon in this one. And what you and what we mean by tide generating force, tide generating force is specifically the horizontal component of the resultant force. So it, it, remember, we can look at the vertical and horizontal parts of any force. Um, that's where vectors came from. This is just the ones along the surface of the Earth, and they this this is in bold because this is really important. Because this is a function of both centripetal force as well as gravitational force, and both of those are related to the distance from the moon, they are inversely proportional to the cube of the distance between the two objects, which means the distance to the moon, between the moon and the Earth here, has a um, cube distance or a cube change in the strength of the tide generating force. They tend to be maximal, um, maximized along a latitude of 45 degrees relative to the equator and the zenith. We're going to talk about why that is exactly. In all these pictures, we've sort of drawn the moon in this perfect um, line over the equator, and that doesn't actually happen. You'll see that in when we're talking about tides, very little is uh, perfect. By the way, it should be mentioned that tides um, are also generated in lakes. The big lakes, like the Great Lakes, have um, tides that you can see sloshing back and forth. They're not as big as oceanic tides. You can see it in the atmosphere, and believe it or not, you can actually see it in the crust of the Earth as well as the crust of the moon. They deform slightly. Um, they, they, these tend to be moderately sized bulges, but because purport, you know, compared to what we see around us, we can't see the difference. We don't really notice them. Um, tidal bulges. Um, we're going to talk about this a little bit later on, um, well, actually tomorrow, and, uh, you know, where they come from in relation to the sun and the moon. So we're going to stop right there. I know this is a short one, but we never would have been able to keep the video full-sized otherwise.